Hello everybody, Manix here. It is time for a quick little knife review on a blast from the past, even though this wasn't from very long ago. This is the Cold Steel Medium Size Voyager. They have the large and the XL still for sale now as of filming this in early mid-2022, but they discontinued these a few years back. Why, I don't know, uh, but I think these are absolutely fantastic EDC knives. Right off the bat, if you find these in good condition, you're going to pay probably around 60 bucks, maybe a little bit more. You're definitely going to pay more if it's in new in box because they're discontinued. That's just how that goes. Um, but this is one of those knives that I've eyeballed for years and years and years. I've been a huge Cold Steel fan for almost a decade now. And I pulled the trigger on one of these a long time ago. I don't remember what happened to it. I think I sold it or traded it or something. But it's just one of the Cold Steels that I... I wasn't crazy about it. I was like, eh, the medium Voyager was the one size of Voyagers I didn't like very much or didn't care about very much because I like the bigger blades. The bigger blades are cool, and that's what Cold Steel is known for, generally speaking, are the bigger knives they make. Uh, but what I will say is, you know, getting this one in hand once again, now that I'm re-completing my Cold Steel collection, I absolutely love this thing. It's so handy, so EDC and utilitarian friendly, while being extremely strong, and yes, a good defense blade, I will say as well, despite being the medium size of the three, the large and the XL being the other two. It's funny how they call this the medium, because there was never a small Voyager, but there you go. Get the specs out of the way real quick. We have a handle length of 4.25 inches, blade length of 3 inches on the nose, making the overall length 7.25 inches. A US 8A blade steel, happens to be stone wash. This is the Tonto shape. They also sold this in the Vicero as well as the Clip Point. We have Grivery or Grivery, also known as Grivex handle scales right here, also known as FRN, fiberglass reinforced nylon, also known as GFN, glass filled nylon. Same stuff, glass and plastic mixed together pretty much. Aluminum flush-mounted liners in there. You heard me correctly, aluminum, not steel. Not skeletonized, but they are lighter than steel. It's very rare I hear of aluminum liners being used in knives, but that's what they did with their Voyagers to, loosen, to lighten them up a little bit ever since they redesigned them back in the day. Cylindrical thumb studs. Triad locking mechanism, extremely strong. Tip-up carry only. Comes with the second pocket clip when you got these new in box, so you could screw that one onto the other side. So it is a completely ambidextrous folding knife. Now, what do I love about this knife so much? I love the aggressive handle scale pattern. It calls the Iron Cross design. It's very aggressive, very grippy. Uh, an attempt of jimping up here on the spine, the handle it doesn't match with the lock bar or the blade, so it's not very effective. But it's there, you know, it's better than nothing, I guess. I love how small it is, even though it's not a very small knife. In comparison to the large and the XL, yeah, very small. Again, three-inch blade, but this will keep the knife legal, generally speaking. There's a lot of states that don't allow knives above 3.5 inches as far as their blades are concerned. Ridiculous laws like that, but this will keep it legal. It'll keep it small. It's very easy to maneuver. It's very easy to carry, despite being on the thicker side as far as the handle is concerned. But I do like that. Yeah, it makes carrying it a little bit more difficult. It takes up a little bit more spot, uh, space in your pocket, but there's more to hold on to. It's more hand-filling. So despite being a smaller knife, you have you know a little bit to grip onto right there. Or a little more to grip onto, I should say. So it's grippy, and yeah, I'm going to say it's a good tactical blade for a defensive situation. Yes, I do like having extra reach. I like having a longer knife when it comes to a defensive situation. A one dark and rainy day, if that were to happen. But... This one, because it's so strong, because it deploys quickly, because you have a lot to hold on to, and because the grip is aggressive, it's not going to fly out of your hand the day you try to deploy it fast under a stressful situation and your adrenaline's going, you're shaking. Uh, this knife will fit the bill pretty well for that. You'll do well, I think, with this. Because, you know, you don't want a slick, small knife when it comes to defensive situation. I want a giant knife when it comes to defense. I want something like that, a holdout one. For defense, I want reach. But... If you want something that's easy to carry and good for utility tasks, and it's not going to take up too much space in your pocket, it's not going to be difficult to maneuver and manipulate, deploy, etc., uh, that's when the smaller knives really shine. Uh, once they're in hand, I want a bigger knife with a longer blade. I want a 6-inch blade at that point. Yeah, for defense, sure. But when it comes to carrying and everything else, I want to keep the knife smaller, lighter weight. Speaking of weight, it is 3.2 ounces, if I didn't say that already. Uh, not the lightest knife for the size. You can get lighter, but it's not heavy either by any means. Again, it's probably those aluminum liners in there. So very strong, very tough, 
pretty much overbuilt, I would say, with that triad lock and the liners in there. One thing I will say I don't like about it, they pretty much shrunk down a large Voyager as far as the handle goes. They didn't really change the shape too much to accommodate for its size. Maybe it's for the pocket clip. I, I don't know why, but as you can see, when I grip on this, boop, my pinky touches the... Uh, end of the handle, I should say. I don't know what to call that. I was going to call it a guard, but it's not exactly a guard if your fingers are not completely enveloped in it. It's it's poking out. It looks like the knife's too small for my hand, almost. But it's not when you look at the other choils. Clearly, my other fingers line up, and it's comfortable. It's just right here. It's not uncomfortable by any means. It's a completely comfortable folder. But, that being said, ergonomically speaking, I feel like I'm like, eh. I don't know. As soon as my pinky touches that end of the handle, I feel like I'm pivoting the whole knife. Like, it's not supposed to be there or something. So, not the most comfortable knife. It's not the most secure. Uh, but if, if they made this wrap around your pinky, that would be a really long knife in comparison to the smaller EDC knife size they were going for, for the concept of this knife. So, yeah, that, that's something a lot of people did complain about, and I kind of complain about it too. It, it just looks like you took a large Voyager and, whoop, just shrunk it down. Uh, they could have probably done something better with the handle, but it is what it is. You know, it's not uncomfortable, and you can scooch up here if you want. For its second tier, it's more precise grip. I would call that for doing precise shaving or whittling work, or you just get trying to really get scraping into something. That's what this grip right here is for. The standard grip is going to be right here. If you go any lower, it kind of feels like it's going to get knocked out of your hand. You could go down here if you wanted and really pinch the sides of the handle with that aggressive iron cross grip. Really have them lock into your fingers right there, lock into your skin if you wanted some extra reach. I, I suppose you can go into this grip too if you wanted. But normally the saber grip, natural grip, saber grip, I think this is called a pinch grip. You could do that. This is the absolute maximum reach you wanted with this thing or do a thrust cut or something. But... um it is what it is. You know, it's not the greatest handle shape, but it does mimic the style of the other Voyagers. That's what they were going for. Uh, I would have liked to see a different handle. Maybe that's part of the reason they stopped making it. I don't know why they stopped making these medium Voyagers, but they probably were the least popular of the other three, or the other two sizes. It was probably the least popular of the three. Maybe that's why they stopped making it. Just a quick look at it. They stopped making these things, so if you do find them, again, $60 range or so. I happen to like the Tonto the most. I'm a Tonto guy. But the Vaquero is pretty awesome, and the Clip Point, you know, is probably going to be the most useful of the three-blade styles. But this is my favorite because I like Tontos. Carry's fine, actually. A lot of people complain about the Colts Apocalypse being too tight or being too aggressive. This one, actually, now that I look closely at it, it looks like it may have been bent out. Whoever owned this may have bent it because typically the pocket clips are on the really tight side, they're usually pinching the handle very much so, like that. And that combined with the fact that you have a very aggressive handle scale pattern underneath it makes a very aggressive pod clip. It makes it kind of difficult to deploy for some people. Personally, lately, I have not had an issue deploying the cold steel knives, even if they have the combination of the two. Uh, but a lot of people do complain about them, so maybe I'm just getting lucky and I'm getting looser pocket clips with all the cold steels I have. But maybe somebody did, in fact, bend this one out. Yeah, in fact, now that I, I just noticed I was doing this review now, it's kind of loose. It carries fine in my pocket, but it, it moves around freely with this. I might actually take this off and tighten it down just a little bit. I just noticed that now. Uh, but generally speaking, yeah, yeah, it looks like whoever owned this probably did that. They're like, oh, man, that's that's pretty tight. And they bent them out. They, yeah, if it holds the pocket clips too tight for you, you can do that. But um, don't know what else to really say about it. It's an absolute fantastic EDC knife. Really strong. It's got everything you want in a tactical blade except for size. But, just like I said earlier in the video, sometimes you may want a smaller knife. If you're talking about legalities and technicalities and all that BS, yeah, unfortunately, the bigger knives may land you in trouble, even if you were doing nothing wrong with them. It's just how it is. So yeah, Apocalypse kind of the only hit on it. I don't love it. Don't hate it. But I know a lot of people who do hate the Cold Steel Apocalypse for being so aggressive and tight and pointy and just completely wreak havoc on your pocket. They can... Yeah, again, this one's kind of loose now that I look at it. It should actually be making contact with the handle, not floating above it, but it, I did buy this knife used, so. AUS 8A, recently Cold Steel upgraded to the AUS 10A, which essentially is the same thing, but with more carbon content, actually considerably more carbon content, uh, which means it'll get a little sharper, will retain its edge a little longer, but it will be more prone to rust, more prone to corrosion. That's just the nature of the beast. Carbon and chromium are your two ingredients of the bread and butter when it comes to 
blade steels, generally speaking. I, I think when they switched to CTS BD1, this was back in 2015, 2016, they stopped making the medium Voyagers. So I think you can only find these in the AUS 8A blade steel, and there's no markings on them either. So around 2015, 2016, the large and the XL, they changed to the CTS BD1, and then I think after that they switched to AUS 10A. This just instantly became a favorite EDC knife of mine for work. I have to open up boxes and cut cardboard down and stuff pretty often. And I have EDC'd and carried my uh, Large Espada, my Holdout 1, my XL Voyager. I've, I've carried all my giant knives uh, purely just for testing, but also for entertainment, as well as for a last-ditch defensive option. But um, what I will say is I like this knife way more than those for my job and for EDC tasks. It's just so much easier to manipulate. It takes up less space in the pocket. It's less heavy. You barely even know it's on you or you completely forget it's on you. You pull it out. Somebody needs help cutting something. You don't have to, you know, pull it out of your pocket and, like, give it, like, a whole foot of space and then slowly deploy it to make your cut by, like, you know, <laughs> being two feet away from the object you are attempting to slice open, then put it back together, being very careful, making sure nobody's walking by you. You don't want people to see it. You don't want unwanted attention. You don't want to accidentally injure anybody who just runs into you with the, when you're holding the blade, you know? There's so many issues that come with the bigger knives as much as I like them and as much as I still love carrying them. These are just more useful, and that's what getting these medium Voyagers, again, made me appreciate once again. But again, looking at this objectively, we have a great EDC small option, but a thick handle and its aggressive pattern, its shape, everything else about it makes it a great defense option as well. Even though you may not have the reach, you have everything else you would want in a defensive blade, and that's why these medium Voyagers are so awesome. And legally speaking, you know, if you stab someone, if you slice someone, even in defense, even if you're being completely lawful, you will go to court, of course, and there's going to be a jury and there's going to be a lawyer trying to convince the whole court that you are in the wrong, that you are bad for trying to defend yourself. Oh, yeah. Though, unfortunately, sometimes those people win. And that's really bad. They are very, very, very bad people. To put it lightly, I'll keep it at that. So something like this will be a lot harder for a evil, an evil lawyer like that to argue against. If you lawfully defended yourself, somebody was trying to kill you or whatever happened, whatever the situation was, and you pulled this out and you had to attack them with this, let's say they died, you killed your attacker, or even just injured them, maybe you didn't kill them, you just injured them, but you still go to court either way, this will be a lot harder to argue against in comparison to, say, the large Voyager or especially the XL Voyager, the XL Espada, good night with that one. Although the bigger knives are better for defense, a lot more effective when it comes to legalities and the court and the law, that's when things get a little bit more hazy. Uh, people start to look at you like you're a madman or something if you're carrying, you know, something like this and you defended yourself with it. Even though this will be a lot more effective, this... I feel like you would not get in trouble as easily, even though, even if they're both completely legal to carry and even if you were being completely lawful. So that that's another thing that you may want to consider. I consider it sometimes too. So basically, that's pretty much all my points of this thing. It's lightweight, but it is kind of on the chunkier side, and it's really tough. It's going to be the strongest knife out there for this size, pretty much. I can't think of any other knives other than some other cold steels, perhaps, uh, that they make in this size, although they don't make a whole lot in this size. So... As far as all the other EDC options go, this one is one of the strongest, if not the strongest, for this size. For having a 3-inch blade, it'll make a great defensive knife, it'll make a great backpacking blade, it'll make a great knife to keep on you for camping or doing some harder work in the great outdoors. You have that triad lock on there, I've talked about this dozens of times, but it's a lock back with an integral tempered stop pin in the middle, which makes it one of the strongest locking mechanisms in the world. There's no way it's going to accidentally disengage on you under even really hard use. I like the pattern right here. I like the ergonomics of the handle and the choils. I like how thick it is. There's a lot to hold on to. Love the thumb studs there. Very quick deployment. I love the stonewash finish they put on these. Not only do I think it's beautiful, but functionally speaking, it makes it more difficult for the knife to rust. It's just part of the process. So anyway, that's it. It's the medium Voyager. Great EDC knife. Very tough, very strong, good tactical blade for being such a small knife. There you have it.